Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good morning, good day, good night. Um, here I am in Sussex on the south coast of England. Here you are in Beijing, which is a source of sadness for me because I very much enjoy coming to China twice a year, to Beijing and to Shanghai. Uh, but we've been working very hard to bring our international speakers on video to you so that you can still get the sense that Design China Beijing and indeed its sister show, uh, its sister forum Design Shanghai really carries the leading edge of design discussion in the world. Um, the designer I'm going to introduce now I've known of for many years but I haven't known him that well and I haven't known his work very well and it's only really recently in the last year or so I guess that I've got to know him and this is why it is such a delight to be able to bring him to Beijing. His name is Abe Rogers of Abe Rogers Design and the title of his talk is Nimble Design in a Kaleidoscopic World. Abe himself is not an architect, but he does employ architects, and he's done many um, architectural projects. And there are two things that I think about his work that really stand out for me. One is his love for people, and the other is his love for colour. It's a rare day on which you don't see Abe wearing a pink shirt and red trousers, and occasionally he goes green, but that's only about, you know, one day in five or six. Um, his, his sense of colour and his sense of the way that it uplifts the soul and uplifts the spirit is um, unique. And as I say, I'm absolutely convinced that what runs through his work is this thread of love for people. Uh, he'll talk to you about a number of different projects, but I want you to pay particular attention to his uh, most recent Maggie's Centre, which is a hospice for people dying of cancer here in the UK. And every single thing about this project, it, it houses a number of people who are basically needing nursing, but who are still, you know, up and about. Um, they're not actually in bed, but there are things, there are such human touches that Abe's work brings, like making every door handle hand-carved so that people, every time they go through a different door, they have a different experience. There's this relationship between tactility and, and visuality and the aesthetic that I think is a very, very strong thread in Abe's work, and I wish you very great success in enjoying his speech. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Design China, Beijing, or should I say good afternoon? I'm very honoured to be here talking to you today about, uh, about the studio's work and sad not to be there in person, but these are very strange times in a very strange world and we're having to adapt to a whole new set of rules and criteria, alas. I really today want to talk about nimble design in a kaleidoscopic world, which should touch on these, these themes of, 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 of change. For me, all the time we're having to adapt to, to different worlds, but nothing as radical as a deep sea anglerfish who lives 500 meters below, below ground, who can dislocate his, his jaw and eat things twice his, her size, who has a, a, a shining light and has males clipped onto her side, um, giving the, the, the aid of, of fertilization, but, but no other use than, than, than that. I think the way design adapts to different conditions is always so interesting. Or the rayfish, who's, who lives only 200 meters um, below sea level, with giant eyes and an extraordinary fat, the most divine of, of bright colored um, fish around. We need to draw inspiration from different worlds and different places. We need to look at what nature can achieve in order to, to aspire to transform ourselves. And no, no animal is more transformative than the, than the grand octopus, who can, can change her color. Um, they, can, they can change their body mass. They have no bone, so they can redistribute their flesh in, in, in many ways. Not to mention they're intelligent um, and quite tasty too. In our work, we use a lot of color. And no color is more powerful than the color of nature. The least that we, the, the, the most we can try to achieve in, in, in design is touch on the vibrancy of the orange or the depth of the blue sky or the lushness of the green forest or the psychedelic multicoloredness of the, of, 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 of the corals. I think in this ever-changing world and what we've just seen, the idea of remote working and working from home, 
the whole office has become a new, um, a, a new space, a, a, new, a new space for, for, for intervention. Back in 2002, we created um, a piece called Micro Office. Micro Office really looked at how the laptop had been invented and the office left behind. So we tried to liberate the office and make it as mobile as the computer. We tried to design a system that could, that could work with you and follow you around, around the house and maybe out into the streets. There was no need for, for desks to be about weight and solidness. There was, this was about lightness and dynamics, about moving and revolving planes, about different work systems, about um, transportality and, 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 and freedom to, 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 to move. Somehow, never this has been felt more relevant um, than, than, than today, when we're all, we're all in, the, in the home office working, using our kitchen tables, um, using our coffee tables, using our laps, um, our beds as, 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 as desks. The office no longer has a physical location. The office is the space that we, that, that we, that, that we work from. It can be a bus seat, it can, it can move on. In 2000 and, um, for, sorry, 2014, we decided the ladder that lights the wall. Um, this was a project working in collaboration with my father, Richard Rogers, looking at structures, um, a, a dynamic, uh, legible structure that could, that could change the height of your working position. So you, you could be working from, the, from the, the top of the room looking down, altering, creating a break. So maybe a mini office that floats above the dining table to give you a different horizon and a different space to work. And within this ladder that likes the wall, there is a, there is a sliding table um, and there is a slot that contain a glass of wine or, or, or a laptop, as, as you like. But more recently, we've discovered that we can work anywhere, that there are really no boundaries and we don't even need a micro office necessarily. This is in, in Noca, Cantabria, where I've spent um, many uh, weeks over the summer working remotely and finding different places to work, different places to liberate myself, different places to hide from the, from the children and the, and, the, and the animals, different places to, to, to calm the mind and to look and, and see. And I find this new potential really fascinating. How we don't need to be, to be chained. We can, be, we, we, we can run free and sit in a tree with a laptop, watching the, 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 the days go by without constraints, while smelling the leaves. Or we can work in the kitchen whilst cooking lunch, transforming our tasks. I think this starts to encourage a mindset which is much more, um, which is much more fluid, is less bound by, 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 by specifics. I really believe in the, in the importance of corruption, um, in contamination, and the idea that the, 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 that a stew bubbling while you're working away can trigger different memories. One of the worries about these new working conditions is the loss of serendipity. But maybe there's another type of serendipity that we can program into the, into the evolving workspace, which is the serendipity of life, the dog walking through, the fish stop boiling away, the arrival of, of uh, different lights that can trigger different emotions and different memories. But I think um, we've spent too much of our time cramped over, over desks with piles of papers all around us, with the obligation of work. And we need to, 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 um, to drive forward and find more refreshing, more inspiring, more uplifting, um, more explorative ways of, 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 of seeing. These are a series of live telephone calls um, working between Spain and UK, Spain and Italy, um, Spain and Kuala Lumpur, discussing projects and, and ways forward. But rather than pacing up and down in a, in a, in a claustrophobic office, this is about breathing the sea watching the sky come, feeling the, the temperature of the water, 
And sometimes you just need to submerge your head under the sea to really understand what's happening on the other side of the, of the, of the telephone line. Sometimes you need to feel alive and you need to feel submerged and you need to feel cleansed. And the sea, the elements, the freedom unlock these potentials. Now, of course, this is, this is, a, this is a, a very privileged situation to be able to base yourself from, a, from, from, from an office. But the same thing can happen in the park, as I've seen continuously in Haggerson Park, where people have been using it recently as a gym, as an office space, as a lunch space. We no longer need to label objects with such precise um, functions. The dining table is also the office. The sofa is also the, the, um, the, 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 the work, is also the workshop. Um, the kitchen counter is a studio. We can start to layer our functions and overlap our activities and the world can become a more exciting place. But who knows what happens to the, to the towering office blocks. One of the things we've been really interested in the last few years is dissolving architecture. In particular, we've been working with a, um, with a festival called the Wonder Fruit Festival in Pattaya, Thailand. And here we've been, we've kind of master planned the whole project. We've been doing it for the last three years. Um, prior to the, yeah, the, the festival has been going for five years. So the first thing we really look at is the location of the venues, the, how the sound bleeds. And we soon realized that sound is circular. And so really the circles need to become the key um, manifestations of this, of this extraordinary festival. Then we start to think about colour. The festival is, the, the fields are green, so we need to be working with reds and pinks, the opposite side of the wheel. We need to create structures which are inspired by the local nature, which are made with the local craftspeople, but structures which do not leave scars upon the land. We do not need concrete or bricks. We need, we need reusing old materials, the entrance is made from offcuts of Jim Thompson's silk um, tapestry together to create these giant flags. It has to be said that some blighter stole three of them last year um, because they become so exquisite. But these are things that otherwise would end up in left mounting dust in the corner of the workshops. They signify, they move, they're flexible. The eco pavilion, where we simply shuffled soil to create a crater with multi-tiered um, ter terraces to sit in. And we worked with Shanghai umbrellas to make 120 umbrellas that would shield you from the light, um, from, from, the, from the midday's light. So talks would go on inside in this informal, fresh environment with breeze allowed to go through. This is a new form of architecture, which is not architecture at all, which is about moving earth and planting umbrellas trying to deconstruct the substance, trying to create architecture without scars, without concrete. We created a series of floating bathhouses for people to escape, hide from the music in the cool water that's come, earthy water that's come off the landscape. All constructed from, from bamboo, which when the festival is over and no one is coming, returning, will melt back into the landscape leaving maybe a few thousand pins behind. These, these, these sit on, on water canisters, which will have life beyond. Or the, the theater of feast, which is a um, shelter with a table wrapped running underneath it. That's a continuous circular table um, that fits 262 people. And the kitchen in the center, which becomes the hub of the space, with the light flooding in, protected by umbrellas again. Um, though sometimes the chef had to dart around um, to keep themselves sheltered from the, from the burning hot sun. But it created this real theater, this space of, of celebration. And on to the, to the living village, the creature village and the living stage. Again, working with the earth to raise structures, working with recycled fabrics to, to, to signify, creating, um, creating scar-free architecture 
to, to herald the festival and to, to celebrate its, its brilliance and to allow the people to run wild without leaving that, without causing damage behind. There are, no, there are no disposable cups. Everyone carries around their glass. There are no um, non-organic materials being used. It is super um, low carbon nature. And the, the, the space feels clean and tidy because it's not a throwaway mentality. We're looking after ourselves, we're looking after the, the, the earth. And we're trying to create a softer form of design that melts back and dissolves back in the environment from where it, from where it came. But in, in some ways, um, this, this is a competition which we ran, which a brilliant Swiss um, team, um, team ran the woven house, um, which is constructed from just strings and bamboos and has, has um, very little physical entity attached to it. It feels, um, it's there almost like a ghost, um, shining a beacon that, that pops out, heralding an exhibition. But try to reduce how little architecture can be. 2,500 bricks was a, a piece by, by, by Ellen um, where she, she constructed these bricks working with local sculptors from the soil, the, from the local soil, and laid them out to create a giant park which she would then perform. But the constructing the bricks was part of the performance as well. And then when the, when the, when the, when the pathway was finished, it was left to melt back into the ground where it had come from. So this real circular economy, this circular thinking, taking stuff from the land, allowing it to return to the land, be it bamboo, be it earth, be it, um, be, it, be it silk. We're not trying to dominate. We're not trying to conquer. We're trying to live with and take partnership with the things from all, all, all around us. Every year we have more ideas than we can possibly get built, creating wild structures to climb and play, to roll and discover. Um, working with, with bamboo that's growing to, to articulate it into tents and, 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 and secondary structures. Um, using, using umbrellas to shelter climbing frames and creating un old um, discarded tires. Making mud slides. But then you have the problems of too much heat and suddenly your mudslide becomes, um, becomes a crater where you get very sore backs if you were to slide down it. So we have to suddenly spray more water, which luckily there's lots around. But the joy of play is something we hold very important to our, to our work in EPOS. Now the world is growing at, at crazy rates. Social distancing seems so ironic when we're, we're, when we're talking about um, cities becoming so crowded and more and more people are returning to the cities, are magnetized to the, to the urban areas. So how are we going to, 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 to live all together in the future with this, with this constrained space? In 2011, we, we designed our first student room for SCAPE, who we've continued to work with for the last nine years, which is really taking a tiny 13.2 square meter room and work out how can we make the most freedom inside this, uh, in, inside this constrained space. The first design move was to shave off the corner of the bathroom and to liberate the window and to give you a clear view right the way through. The second um, was to, to build a breakfast bar in front of the bed, so the bed felt a little bit protected. Pushing a window seat out into the, into the, into the ether allowed the um allowed um people to be able to, to sit beyond the perimeters of the of, of the room putting cushions on the walls allowed the bed to become a sofa and so this very simple compact compressed room was formed since then i think we've we've, we've built fifteen thousand students room um around the world in australia in the uk um, and in America. Even doing some Cambridge from, from, from Newnham College, 
changing the palettes and the materials depending upon the environment and, and, and the space. And more and more now, we're looking at how to evolve these designs of very compact rooms into, into, into to slightly less compressed um, living in, in environments. But it's all very well to live in these very compressed spaces. If you have somewhere to decompress yourself to, if you can fill your lungs with green air, with the oxygen of the outdoors, with communal spaces, then life starts to, starts to, to, to balance. The truth is, we need to get you from place to place, and we need to celebrate the motions as you walk through a space. So very simple corridors across the student accommodation, with giant numbers, with lights thrown onto the ceiling, with um, the fiberglass shields that, that protect all of the, um, the risers, so you can gain access without going through the apartments. But what this is leading to is the realization that in order to survive, in this new urban ways, we need to find um, spaces to, to come together and work together and think together. Spaces um, around eating, working, drinking, playing, exercising, watching and seeing. These are collections of communal rooms that we have created um, for SCAPE and for Newnham College. Um, but these really start to make us thinking, if we can make this, these habitats work within a student accommodation, Maybe we can, we can help these, over, these overgrowing cities um, by creating a new form of compact living, a balance between smaller private spaces but larger communal spaces where you can start to separate your activities. Not everything needs to be done together. If we can avoid commuting situations like this through living much more centrally but in more, com but in more um, concise environments, then we can really start to change the way the city, the, the city works. It seems criminal to spend up to three hours a day going from home and, and, and back again. So in private, I think we're talking about the living room, the bathroom, the dining room, the kitchen, the bedroom and storage. The communal can be laundry. We don't need a kitchen indoors. It can be larger dining, cooking together. It can be outdoor space, the garden. It can be communal studying. And then in the public, we're talking about the, you know, living at the bottom of the building, maybe the restaurants, social areas, gym, office spaces, library. These all work on different levels and different levels of collaboration. So how can we create this little cell to plug into these communal in, in, in environments? For you and I, we've developed a 19 square meter by 3.2 meter um, space. The, the, the extended height really helped us to, to, to start to, to, to pile up the activities. So you can store underneath and sleep above, but also when you have a visitor, the bed is not seen. One of you can be hiding and the other one working. It immediately starts to unlock these different activities. And there is no doubt that to have space to breathe above your head is a really important, um, a, a, a important element. The original competition was to create 24 square, square meters with 2.4 meter heights. And we said we would reduce the plan if we could increase the height, but containing the volume the same. And this is the outcome. Um, super, super compact, compressed, masses of storage, space to have a freestanding sofa, spaces to, to hide and sleep privately, spaces to paint your wall, and windows to, 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 to look out on. It's about multifunction, but not maybe in a, so mechanical, like a Swiss army knife, but more, um, more permanent. So you, you're using the same surfaces for different functions. Of course, there's some dynamic movements and, 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 and sliding. But the idea that you can store away all your possessions as you nomadically move um, across, ac across the world. Whether this is in London, or whether this is in Melbourne, or whether it is in Kolkata, or in Shenzhen. These become these, 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 these shelters before you go out into the world and embrace the park, the community, etc. But as long as we design with great detail, we can really control the way things look and feel. In a similar thinking, we've refurbished the Balfour Tower, um, the Goldfinger's extraordinary building in the east of London. We very much try to hang on to the to the to Goldfinger's um, 
ethos and his, 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 his thinking and his material palette. But we've, we've, we've removed what is now unnecessary, which really are the walls and the, the corridors, which we needed because of regulations back then and we can now work without. So we allow light to pass from back to front. We allow the kitchen to talk to the living room. Removal of walls, the liberation of spaces, the freedom to, to, to walk and to, 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 to think. In these freer spaces, you can move the table, you can move a chair, you can juggle around the activities, you can work at the kitchen, you can cook at the table, etc. And you can look at the city, meanwhile. And then where the services used to be, we've now created a whole series of community spaces. So a cinema that you can all go and watch, a gym for exercise, a yoga studio, a music room, a table tennis room, a library, a hobby shop. Even, even an extended dining room in a kitchen. So you can live in, this, in, these, in these relatively humble apartments, but you can have access to all these additional activities where you can go and play music as loud as you want. We don't need to have our own gardens if you have communal gardens. We don't need to have our own music rooms. And in fact, we never could have our own music rooms when we have a shared spaces. So this becomes about this passion for shared spaces and shared thinking. More recently, we have just completed um, our first um, standalone building for, for Maggie's, the Royal Marsden. And here we've really tried to capture a building that is designed around the human body and really looks at the relationship between the user, the visitor, the mind and the design. Most people coming into this building are affected by cancer in one way or the other. It is not a medical center, it is a, it is a space really about, um, about discovery and about spiritual freedom. It's a space to inspire you and to help you feel better. So in the natural light, the Circadian River, are so key to, this, to these stories. So we want to wash all of the visitors in light. So the whole building's plan is wrapped around um, the, the sun and how it enters the building as it moves its 360 degrees. We want to bathe the, um, the visitors in light. We worked with the extraordinary and brilliant plantsman, Pete Udall, who created a garden around it. So though we are in the middle of a giant, um, rugged, brutal hospital complex, we, we have this, this calming oasis with greenery and redderies and plants growing all, all, all around. The plan is evolved around how the building will be used. And the architecture comes second to the diagram of function and flow and articulation. The palette of materials are based on materials which will, which will um, give comfort and joy to the, to the users. Avoiding metal on things that you touch, wooden handles all hand carved come along. Painting walls different colors to create different emotional relationships wrapping the exterior in, 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 in four shades of red terracotta, which creates it as a kind of beacon sitting in the, in the light, almost an object rather than an architecture can, that, with so much soul that it, that it, can, that it contains. In the, in the, in the center of, of, of everything is, is, is the greenery, wrapping the building around, and these views looking out to the sky and the plants, to encourage people to think and to feel and to be aware, to be brave and to discuss things with others. Even in the fenestration, we worked with an artist, Sarah Fanelli, who hand painted all the, all, all the marks. But into the space, you can see we, 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 we radius the corners to make it more human as we walk through. We have lights um, from the same terracotta factory. I personally went out and hand glazed them. Um, they, everywhere is, 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 the, is, the, is the touch of the craftsperson, the furniture, um, the interiors, the bathrooms, which Maggie talks a lot about, are places to escape. Um, the, it's centered around this, this, the, the dining table where everyone is, 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 pulled, is, is pulled to, where you, you come together to discuss but you can always see out. You can see a minimum of, of five windows from each, well, from any of the central spaces. You never feel hemmed in, you never feel claustrophobic. The celebration of, of the coral ribbon, 
the skylights that pour into the into the bathrooms, which are be, which are radiant coloured um, pink polished plaster. The tactility of these door handles, each one personally carved, makes you think as you interact with them. After all, a door handle can be a sculpture. Shelves of books of art objects of Palazzi um, engage the, 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 the users. Um, whereas these endless moments of light and views break up the, 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 the experience. Darker rooms to, to sit and contemplate. Um, sofas underneath skylights where the radiant light pours on top of you. Really trying, we've been studying human experiences and how we, how we can enlighten whether you're sitting alone and contemplating some sad news or whether you've met someone to really share your, your, your thoughts, your worries and positive energy with. These are spaces designed around the human and designed around the emotional touch, spaces designed to engage the psychology um, of space and the body and how we can better improve the relationship. And the surrounding of these spaces by these vibrant gardens creates an experience second to none. Thank you.